So you want to know the best camera settings for concert photography. Well, coming up, I have eight different scenarios for you to view. And if you stay tuned to the end of the video, I'll give you the answer to the $64,000 question. Meet Robert Miller, the guitar killer. This photograph was taken last year at Garland Sounds of Summer. The photograph was taken with a Nikon D800, an 80-200 f2.8 zoom, and the focal length is 185 millimeter. The focus mode is AFS or single. The aperture is f4. The shutter speed is 1 500th of a second, and the metering is at spot. The ISO is 400, and the exposure mode is full manual. This photograph is of Ali Venable. It was shot the same day, same place, but just at a different time. Here are the settings for this shot. You'll notice it's the same camera. The focal length is 200 instead of 185. The focusing modes are exactly the same. The aperture is closed down to 4.5 instead of 4, and the shutter speed is slowed to 1 25th of a second. We're still using manual uh, exposure but the, and spot metering, but the ISO is now 1250. Why? The difference is the lighting conditions have changed from daylight to darkness and actual stage lights. In this case, keeping the same settings that worked earlier in the day would not have worked in this instance. This is a photograph of Cody Hibbard. It was taken at the Fort Worth River and Blues Fest a couple years ago, and the time of day is right about 5.30 in the afternoon. Okay, so here are the settings for this shot. Same camera, this time the focal length is 86 millimeter. The focus mode is AFC for continuous. It's good for moving subjects. The aperture, it's now 7.1. It's closed down quite a bit, which gives me a little more depth. And also the shutter speed is slowed down to a hundredth of a second. Exposure mode is still full manual. The big deal here is the metering is now matrix and the ISO is 640. So the ISO is kicked up just a hair but the matrix mode for the metering gives me a little more all around metering, not just the subject. This shot is of BJ Barham of American Aquarium. As you can see, he's pretty animated and moves. Okay, and here are the settings for this shot. The camera is still the same, same lens. The focal length is 105 and the focus mode is now AFC for continuous. Uh, focus mode area is single. The aperture is now f2.8, so I've got it wide open and the shutter speed is 1 one sixtieth of a second. The exposure mode is full manual and the metering is spot, so I'm metering right off its face. The ISO sensitivity is 1250, so it's changed quite a bit from earlier. This is a shot of Anna Popovic taking the same place the next day. Okay, let's see how the shot of BJ Barham and Anna Popovic compare. The Anna Popovic shot using the same camera and same lens was shot at 135 millimeter AFC. This time it used dynamic nine points of autofocusing. Aperture was f4, shutter speed was 1 80th of a second, full manual exposure, matrix metering because I wanted to get the area around her. And this time I shot at ISO 1000. So there is a huge difference. This shot is of Jimmy Wallace in the alley behind his shop in Garland, Texas, about 7.30 in the evening, sun's going down. If you haven't heard of this guy, you need to look him up. He's awesome. Okay, so here's his settings. Same camera, same lens at 185 millimeter focal length, AFC for continuous, nine points dynamic uh, focusing. Setting the focus from dynamic nine points or two dynamic nine points from single spot gives you a little room for error. The aperture is f2.8. The shutter speed is 1 1250th of a second. The exposure is still full manual and the metering is spot. This time the ISO, the ISO is 1250. This shot is of Joey Kakura at the Toyota Music Factory's Texas Lotto Plaza. Here are the settings for Joey. Same camera, same lens. Focal length, 200 millimeter on the lens. 
Autofocus AFC. Dynamic 9 points for focusing. The aperture is f4.5, so it's not completely wide open. Shutter speed is 1 one hundredth of a second, and the exposure is full manual. In this case, I use spot metering, an ISO of 1250. So why do you use spot metering? You see the great big neon sign and the safety sign behind him, the safety lights? If you use an, any kind of automatic exposure or you use any kind of metering other than spot, your metering and your exposure will pick that up. And the last shot tonight is of Carlin Knight. She sang with Bobby Sparks, an 18-time Grammy winner, in a little club in Deep Ellum in downtown Dallas. So here are the settings for a small club in downtown Dallas. The same camera, same lens, this time 200 millimeter focal length, AFC, dynamic nine points. This time the aperture was at f2.8 wide open and the shutter speed was fairly slow because this place was dark. It is 1 80th of a second. Full manual exposure and this time I had the spot meter off her face so that I didn't get the surroundings. If you notice there is a big red light in the background. Also the ISO sensitivity is now 1600. So now that you've seen all the different photographs and their settings, it's time to answer your question. What makes the difference in your settings and what is the perfect settings for concert photography? A lot of it just depends upon the time of day, the location, the natural lighting, or the stage lighting in which is available. It also depends upon how fast or how slow the subject is moving. So you need to take that into account. If you got a fast moving subject, you need higher ISO. You also need higher, uh, usually higher ISO and higher shutter speeds. If you've got a lot of things that are, a lot of depth that you have to cover, uh, multiple people in the same photograph, you're going to need to have a smaller opening or smaller aperture, something like 7.1, 7, or 8, maybe 11. So you need to take that in effect. So there's not exactly any real good, solid one answer to saying what's the perfect concert photography um, settings. It's just no such thing. It depends on the venue. It depends on the subject. It depends on the conditions. Uh, I didn't put one person in here. Now, a lot of people get uh, three songs and you're out. And I had an artist completely turn the lights out for the first three songs before they turn the lights on. So I still got the photograph. So uh, it depends upon each individual artist, the condition, the venue, the time of day. There are a lot of variables that are involved. I hope the video is of help to you. Uh, go ahead and, and there's a lot of information on the gray screens to tell you the exact settings for each individual shot. If any of those shot scenarios is, is something that you run into, uh, the information is there. So go ahead and take a look at it. Um, I'd like to say please if you found anything or you find anything useful in this video, Please like, subscribe, uh, you know, uh, share the video if you want. The whole goal is to help people become better concert photographers. The, uh, that's the main goal. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, confusions, anything like that, please, by all means, put them in the, in the comments below so uh, we can take a look at them and answer your questions for you. Uh, we'd like to do that, and we answer... I'm probably, I'd say 100%, not, I'm not going to guarantee 100%, but I'll say we answer a large, very large portion of our comments uh, for our viewers. Thank you. Have a good week. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.